Hi, my name is Erica. I'm the millennial. Hi, I'm Angie the Gen Z. Hi, I'm not. Hi, I'm not normal the Gen Z. And today we're going to be talking about creepy pastas. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, I'm going to be telling the story because I always do. Yeah, she always does. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I th- I th- it's a creepy pasta about like Area Fifty One. It's also kind of like an urban legend. Oh, it's a little both. It's a little bit of both. Okay. Nice. Like okay. it, it first started out as like urban legend, and then mm-hmm. it just like made its way to the creep pasta fandom. Nice. Mm-hmm. Do you guys want to talk about the movie we just watched? Oh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not, no. And your and your opinions. What are your opinions? What are your guys' mm-hmm. opinions on what we had just witnessed? So, we we watched watch. the Five Nights at Freddy's movies on Peacock. On Peacock. Um, Is it worth it? What do you think? Is it worth mm-hmm. it? Yeah. Is it worth it? I see why people yeah. like it. Work? I see why people like it. I see why people like it. I still feel like they could have done way better. Well, I feel like... I don't know. I I would have liked it to be more lore accurate. Mm-hmm. But it's still... It's like decent. semi-lore accurate. Like, things are like, oh, you know, that did happen. But it's not more accurate. Mm-hmm. I don't want to see more gore. Yeah, yeah, because when you think about it, it should be more gory. Like it, it was under horror category, was it? But yeah, it was. It, it was, was under horror and category. And it was not horror. Like there was no like jump scares or anything, you know. Like at least not to us. Maybe to the characters in the actual. Oh yeah, movie. no, yeah, Micah. But not to us. A couple of times. My eyes are dry. Yeah. Um, I really liked the reference at the end with like the scream reference that he did. It was on a scream reference. When he cleaned oh, off his knife, knife, yeah, that might, that might I love that. Reference. That was oh. like, that was like, I was like, yeah, I love. That. I thought you meant that like him like, saying, "I always no, come no, back." No. I'm like, girl, that's no, no, no. That was the screaming reference when he cleaned off his knife because that's what oh, they do. Yeah, that's what they did. Like, I, I love that. I was like, they always go with like their black gloves, right? Like, yeah, but he did it with the um, probably because the actor played Stu Mocker and one of the in the first screen movie. Yeah, was the first? Yeah, first, mm-hmm. first screen, the first screen movie. Matthew Lillard. Yeah, I'm a, I love. I love the actor. Matthew Lillard. Yeah, I love. I love Matthew Lillard too. He, does he such has like such a work. wide range. He does in um, acting. I know him mainly from the screen. You movies know him? And you know him personally? Mainly from the screen movies. If you guys let me talk, from the screen movies and from Scooby Doo, the like, like, the live action Scooby Doo movie. That's funny. There was one scene where like he spotted his fans by sniffing the air, and people saying that he he smelled the weed on them. Oh, bro. Shut Remember up. when they were, like, at a red carpet thingy? No, I don't know. But in the live action movie, and, like, they are all, like, finding their fans. Oh, yeah. And and he found his fans by sniffing the air, and then, like, people are like, oh, yeah, they smelled, they smelled the weed on him. On on them. Yeah, in the beginning. Because, like, supposedly Shaggy's, like, a stoner. Yeah. I believe it. Whenever I think of Matthew Lillard, Lillard as um, Shaggy, I think of the scene where, like, smoke's coming out of the mystery van, and then it cuts to him and, like, Scooby making food. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, probably. I don't know. <laughs> no, that happened. Oh, yeah, okay. I just don't remember that part. Bro? Really? Yeah, because it, like, it probably wasn't just like as memorable. Music, and, hmm? You see the mystery van, and like, it has like a little like roof on top, and you see smoke coming out. And then it comes to the inside, it's like they're like, cooking food. Oh. Okay, guys. So, you guys ready for the creep pasta? Yeah, yeah let's like, go for it. Let's do it. I love listening to the creep pastas that you guys always come up with. Even pasta. You mean the ones I know about and find? Yeah, that you guys do, yeah, because I don't know about them. They're new to me. This one's this one's kind of new to me. I found it, and I thought it was interesting because I like looking at stuff about Area 51 and other things, and I stumbled upon it on on TikTok. Do you remember when they said they were going to storm Area 51? They, they never did. did. No, they, they tried to, did. Did. yeah. They really did. They really did, but they were stopped, of course. Of course, it's really... They, they, just, they were just outside. It's really, like... They were just outside of it. They were no. outside, like... Right, and Protesting. they're all, and then and then the people inside every few are like go home, and they're like, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, and, um, okay, that's pretty funny. Okay, ah, uh, yeah, here you go. So you guys ready? Yeah, I'm ready for you to start. Yes, sir. It is, ma'am. It's sir. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> no, it is, sir. No. Okay. okay. Uh, July 14, 2003, is the exact day on which the U.S. government officially revealed the existence of the mysterious Air 51 base. Since since its revelation, thousands and thousands of theories, con, conjectures, 
conjecture and hypothesis have been built around it. The intense secrecy surrounding the base and the fact that its main objective is to un- undetermine undetermined what? Oh, their main objective is undetermined have contributed to raising them. Thus, there has been speculation about contacts with extraterrestrial ex- extraterrestrial beings. Development of weapons of mass destruction and horrible experiments with human beings. Oh. Wow. Wow. I'm just looking at you guys. You guys don't have to react. Oh, okay. I thought you were on a reaction. No. I was like, okay, let me just look at you because you both look funny. You look funny. You didn't say anything. Weird. Eric doesn't like us. No. Okay. I think I'm adopted. No. Probably. Area 51 is one of the topics. My cousin looks too much like you. My cousin. Valeria. Oh. <laughs> okay. Area 51 is one of the topics that inspire the most conspiracy theories around the world. Many would give anything to just be able to get a little closer and glimpse even a portion of what it's actually hiding. One of many stories circulating about what happened inside Area 51 is what is considered the most extreme human experiment in history. The Abigail Project. This story was leaked by a former cleaner who worked at the site in question, who agreed to reveal the story at the cost of his own life because he wasn't he was unable to continue carrying the heavy burden of keeping the secret. It all started in 1945 after World War II had ended. At the time, at this time, Air 51 operated under the name Indian Springs Air Force Auxiliary Camp. According to our source, the base had been built for the development of secret safekeeping of advanced weapons. The base continued this purpose until in the midst of the Cold War and the instant threat of war with the Soviet Union. The government improved the use of the base for biological experiments. The government considered the developments of biological weapons crucial to maintain its world hegemony. What does that word say? I can't read. What? Yeah, hegemony. Hegemony and arms. What if it meant to say harmony? <laughs> harmony and art. I think it's supposed to be I'm just harmony. Hegemony. Hegemony. <laughs> Superiority over other nations. This is how one of the most important and best repu- reputed scientists of the place, Albert Western, decided to start a project. I thought you were about to say Albert Einstein. Let me continue. Whoa. Albert. <laughs> Stop. Oh, wait, the math ain't nothing. The math is not mad. No, Albert Einstein. Y'all ugly. Oh my God. Hey. Didn't he cheat on his wife? I must say, isn't he dead by this time? He was a child murderer. Was his he? wife was also his cousin. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, was wasn't he like murdered his cousin? Oh, isn't okay. that Edgar Allan Poe? Is it? Both? Edgar Allan Poe married his 13 year old cousin. <gasps> I think they both married the cousin, no? Probably. Mm-hmm. Could be. I think it was really wow. like, common. Wow. I'm like Mary Cousins. Wow. Okay, go ahead. Albert Western decided to start a project whose main objective was to create a super soldier. <gasps> Captain America? Captain America. Dang. Dr. Western desired a kind of Captain America. <laughs> Extremely strong and robust, whose wounds healed quickly and could withstand extreme fatigue, harsh conditions, and very long periods without eating or drinking. Unfortunately, the procedures to carry out such a crazy vision were not clear, so no one was willing to offer themselves as a guinea pig for a project with myth- mythology <laughs> was not defined, whose mythology was not defined, and received who knows how many kind of substances and mutilations in order to make Western fulfill his dream. Myth. It was almost a suicide. What? Substances. Meth. No. It was almost a suicide. In addition to this, the person experimented on had to be someone of complete confidence. That is someone without, or that is, someone without friends or family who were able to denounce the project publicly and sue the base or the government of the United States. They wanted an orphan. (gasps) Or just somebody, yeah, somebody with no family. Yeah, no family. Yeah, family. Yeah. No. Yes. The first option was vagrant or prisoners. Vag- vagrants? 
vagrants, vagrants, or prisoners, but Western needed a completely healthy individual with excellent physical and moral condition. So after much thought, Western made a decision. The right person to receive the experiment was his own daughter, <laughs> Abigail. What? <laughs> Abigail Western was a young university student who studied to follow in her father's footsteps and perhaps one day become an Area 51 scientist like him. Western loved his daughter, but he was a stubborn man who tirelessly pursued his goals, no matter the cost. If he had to subject his own daughter to a risky experiment whose success was uncertain to save America, then so be it. He don't love his daughter. Hmm. Probably does Billy get in some sick, twisted way. He, he loves managed. his daughter, loves her enough to make her a super soldier. <laughs> but he knows that the risks are, like, really dangerous. Mm. Black Widow. Okay. If he had to subject his own daughter to risky experiments whose success was uncertain to save America, then so be it. He managed to convince Abigail to agree, and the Abigail experiment, Abigail projects began. The girl underwent all kinds of surgeries and implants and substance tests. She was mutilated, drugged, and exposed to torture. Nobody saw how all those humiliations were going to develop. The supposed super soldier that Western intended. But the changes began to be noticed after a while. Abigail's appearance had changed drastically. Her bones had grown enormously, but the skin had stretched a little too much. It's, it's kind of giving a little bit of Stranger <laughs> Things vibes. Because you know how they were, like, experimenting on the children a bit? True. To make them, like, yeah, to make them a little different. And yeah. they ended up having powers at the end. What's the woman's name that Captain America fell in love with? I forgot her name. Peggy Carter. It reminded me of Peggy Carter. Okay. Oh. You know how, like, there's, like, a universe where she became Captain yeah. America? I was thinking of that, but then you're saying, like, well, she got mutilated and stuff. Now I'm thinking of FNAF. Thinking of what? FNAF. Why? Oh, because of the kids? Yeah. Oh. Her teeth were also growing gigantic, and her behavior was becoming more animalistic and less rational. Several colleagues of the scientists urged him to stop the Abigail project, that it was outside the limits of all human and scientific action, that the project had been diverted, and now the damage was irrecoverable. But Western, in his arrogance, was willing to take the experiment to its ultimate consequence. It was, on, it was not that he hated his daughter, on the contrary, she was the most precious thing for him. However, he knew that if they ended the project, the young woman would die immediately, since her disfigured body now depended on the technology and conditions that were in the base to survive. Some employees of Area 51, the cooks, revealed to the man who leaked this story that they were ordered to prepare huge plates of food that they had to introduce through a slot into the room, into the sealed room, with a steel door. They never knew for sure what was behind it, but that there were many rumors about the kind of monster that was inside. They also said that only several occasions they managed to see Western standing in front of the door crying or talking to this creature. So he did feel bad. He did. He regretted he did it. Feel bad and he regretted it because he finally saw that it was a failure because everybody didn't want to continue anymore. Yeah. So he probably, he probably wasn't getting any more grant money. More and like then... He felt like he needed to continue because he probably thought all this sacrifice for nothing just no. for it to be well, yeah, no. And also, if he if he stopped, his daughter's dead. Yeah. yeah. So that's why he's kind of like, I can't die. stop yeah. now because like, she's going to die. So we got to continue. Yeah. So it kind of hit him after. He's like, oh, shoot. Like, at I first, he was like that. power hungry. Now he's like, damn. <laughs> damn. He was so confident at first. But then now after seeing everything, he's like, I don't think it is working. He just kind of like loses all that. And it's kind of, he's kind of upset that his daughter's not. Yep. Working out. Okay. Eventually, Abigail ended up losing what was left of her human ra rationing. Like. She became a beast. The Abigail project had officially failed, and Dr. Western finally realized what a mistake he had made. He had subjected his daughter to endless ailments without sufficient scientific criteria. And for what? He had only managed to turn his beloved and beautiful girl into a wild and lethal monster, which only saw him as a substance. Subsistence. Substance? What? Subsistence. Subsistence? Mm-hmm. With nothing Substance? to No. With nothing to continue living for, Albert Weston committed suicide in 1947, but not before strongly begging that his daughter not to be murdered. That they try to return her to normal or at least leave her alive. The rumor was not willing to continue spending money on that failed project, but I respect Dr. Weston's 
out of respect of Dr. Weston's reputation, they fulfilled the part of leaving her alive. They were not going to kill her directly, but they would let hunger take away that monster. They stopped providing any food or medical care for poor Abigail. As a result, on the first night, many employees of the base reported hearing howls and loud scratches. At one point, the alarms went off, but then the head of the base went to, che- went to check. To his surprise, the steel doors was knocked down and the monster was not there. A while later, the remains of two guards were found. The creature had run away hungry. Girl, when you said the door was knocked down and there was nothing there, all I thought in my head was that one scene from American Horror Story when, when the girls were like, Help! He's escaping! He's escaping! He's escaping! That's all I thought. Help I was like, oh, oh, girl. That's all I thought. I was like, what? So it's kind of like a little bit of, give me a little bit of Stranger Things vibes because then she also like, escape. And all other kids yeah, escape. This isn't a little right? girl. This is like a huge monster. That's more like the monsters that are coming from the other world, or the other dimension, right? I've never watched Stranger Things, girl. You've never watched. Me, well, you know sucks. what? Don't be saying that because a lot it of sucks. people like it. Um, I'm like only in season three. I'm going barely to season four, but I just find it hard for me in general to finish any series at all. Mm-hmm. So, like, I'm stuck in Demon Slayer. I'm stuck in what's it called in Attack on Titan. I'm stuck on that. I'm stuck on um. The Edgar Allan Poe show, show. Have you guys heard of that? Edgar Allan Poe show. Yeah, it's called um the Fall of the House of Usher. What about? It's on Netflix. Edgar Allan Poe. It's a, it's, it's like about, a documentary or like a memoir. No, it's actually pretty. It's like a, it's a, like a story that he made. It's actually pretty good. Like it's so far, oh, the first episode is like, like, really good. No, it's 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 about this one. Story? Yeah, it's it's about like this one um really family, the one. Usher family, I love you, and they're really powerful. And then in the oh, beginning God. of the show, um, like. The man, like his children died, like but like unexpectedly and like just weird. Oh. But there's like a horror element to it. Okay. Like it's really like it's really I feel nice. like all his stories have horror elements, no? Yeah, but it's like, so far it's really you good. Were, like, it's, like, gothic really gothic, yeah. Yeah. So far it's really good, but I can't really finish the first episode because when I was watching it, there was a scene where they were doing something with a monkey. Like that's pretty sad. Like, and then I was eating food and I was like, I can't do this. Because I could only really watch stuff when I'm like on my break. So I and I couldn't I just I stopped watching that and I watched I started watching something else. I started watching Demon Slayer. But I'm still stuck in Demon Slayer too. Like I haven't finished like the first episode either. I'm just like really bad. But um it's giving me Stranger Thing vibes. Stranger Thing vibes. I forgot what I was gonna say. I'm sorry, I don't know. Should I continue you guys? Yeah, go ahead. I guess. <gasps> wow. What? <laughs> yeah, I'm just <laughs> oh, oh. I, we've been saying wow in the oh, breaks. Wow. So that's why I'm like, oh wow. Only silent uh-huh. breaks. Although an excessive search and capture operation was immediately carried out within and around the base. Although an attempt was made to annihilate the creature, bullets and explosives did not seem to seriously damage it. So once they managed to surround it in an underground area of the base, they decided to trap it there and seal the area under layers of steel and concrete. Girl! Can you repeat that again? <laughs> I you guys are so ugly. Okay. Although an attempt was made to annihilate the creature, bullets and explosives did not seem to seriously damage it. So once they managed to surround it in an underground area of the base, they decided to trap it there and seal the area under layers of steel and concrete. <gasps> so it kind of is like superhuman. Because it the, the But it doesn't look human. It doesn't look human, but it it's like it has impenetrable skin. It's super yeah. fast. Or it does get, like, manipulate. Yeah. Super or fast. it does get hurt, but, like, it regenerates. Or, like, if it does get hurt, it just doesn't, like, do that much damage to it. As was, if, as thinking, if you like, could outrun it. I was thinking, like, it just doesn't do it. As if you could fight it off. As if you could fight it off. <laughs> it's like, the world's like, most perfect charge, killing like, machine. <laughs> you get I it? Don't know. Yeah. Who oh, are we <laughs> Twilight? <laughs> We're from Twilight. Yeah. Oh. When Edward took Bella, no, when, when Edward took Bella in the forest. Okay, whatever. No, no. Okay, 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 why are you looking at George? Was this when he went in the tree? Yeah. yeah. That scene. Oh. Is he thinking he got red me? And he like jumps around. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, <laughs> and he, like, he's like, is if he can fight me off? And he ripped like a piece of like the, the tree. The tree branch. And he's all like, I'm so strong. <laughs> that, that's, what, that's what I You're thought. corny. That when you were talking about like the... <laughs> They just like trapped okay. it somewhere. Oh, you go, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry, sorry, go ahead. Mike. Sorry, I hit the mic. My notes. 
It's been more than 70 years since the Abigail Project, and there are still Area 51 employees who claim that in the West Wing, behind the walls and especially under the floor, you can hear choked scratches and grunts from time to time. The question is, how has Abigail survived so long without food or water? Perhaps Western's project wasn't as much of a fail as he had thought. Maybe if he continued to test other subjects, he would eventually have managed to create his dreamed invincible soldier. But the question we should be asking is this. If starvation, thirst, bullets, or explosives can't kill it, then what can? Today, Abigail is believed to be one of the reasons why Area 51 is so sheltered. They don't know why. They don't know what it is, and they don't know how to fight it off. They fear that if someone, some curious person came across it today, and if they managed to let the creature escape, things would undoubtedly, undoubtedly end very badly for everybody. Wow. That's it. Wow. 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 Got oh, ugly. The killer's escaping. Oh my God. Help yeah. me. <laughs> Strong with you. Why did you do Put that? Ever lay a hand on me. Like, it's a little darker, so I'm like, why touch it? Wait, right here? Yeah. That's just called being fat. For real? What was it? That's crazy. I don't know that. That's crazy. You see, I don't know where's your dark line. Mm-hmm. I don't know. 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 I feel like he doesn't have a fat face. I have a fat face. You're just fat. Yesterday, in Julie's picture, I had a really fat face and I hated it. But I did too. Whatever. I was really flat in that picture. Your hair is really flat. Boy. Can't mm. relate. I hate mm, that. My hair is like it's really, really messed I up right now. Hear me. Okay, that's it. You're ugly. Man. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's it for today, guys. Okay. Yes. Um. Oh, I forgot. By the time that you guys see this, it'll be past Halloween, but we're not at oh, Halloween yet. Yeah. Huh. But yeah. So any any fun Halloween plans this year, guys? You know damn well we're not gonna go out anywhere. Yeah, I know you're not. You have no life. No, no. I'm gonna just give out candy with you. Yeah, that's our we're plan. We're gonna give out candy. We're gonna we're gonna watch um a movie and then. Uh-huh. No, I know what's your costume gonna be. Gonna be the crow. Be the crow. Nice. Are you, are you just gonna like watch movies? Basically, yeah. Yeah. Probably. Basically, just watch movies. Um, oh, for how for how long have you had this? Like it's it's pretty ago. new. Yeah. Like, I want to write. Like a week. When I went, oh, when we went to um, Middleton Bar. Yeah. How long was it? Was like you got it there? Yeah. Like last no. week. Remember? You want to get it there? I, I went to um, Spirit Halloween. Well, oh. Yeah. I went, I went with uh, Esteban. And then and we got it there. And we got Nano's um, costume. Costume stuff, oh. yeah. But okay, all right. Well, I mean, I guess Rock, Josh. that is all that we're gonna be doing for Halloween. Not much, honestly. Just staying home and yeah, we're all grown. Giving all candy. Yeah, we're grown. We're we're too grown to you know to go. Gonna, ask I want to go somewhere. Yeah. It's gonna be me and Erica, but, you know, dressing our PJs normally. There's gonna be Nano with face paint. Yeah, basically, because he's he's gonna be the one in charge giving the candy. Because um, I'm yeah. like, what are you? Are you the Joker? Well, I'm your dad. <laughs> Shut up. I mean, your dad. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. What are you feeling? Like? I'm in your bed. I'm in no. Your bed. Where, are you, where are you gonna be? What do you mean where? What? In my, when you're in my house. Okay, guys. I guess that's all we're doing. Anyways, happy Halloween to everybody out there. I know it's a little early, but by the time you guys hear it, it might be Halloween time. Um, no, it's gonna be past Halloween time, literally the day before after Halloween. But yeah, it's and be safe. <laughs> Enjoy your holiday. Be safe and check, check the candy. Candies. If you go and you, and you ask for candies, see you all next year. And if you guys haven't gone to go watch the Freddy, Freddy movie, you guys should go. It's fun out to Freddy. It was pretty good. Fun out to Freddy. Yeah, it was pretty good. I, I, I liked it. Um, actually, from somebody who hasn't doesn't really know the lore, the movie was pretty good. It didn't really bug me as much as it bugged Nano, but um, it bugged me a lot. <laughs> but other than that, you should watch it. Uh, but yeah, that's it for today. We'll see you guys next week with an urban legend. Another one. Bye. Oh, bye.